Hey, welcome and thanks for joining me as we close out our journey to the last Sunday of Advent. And that's the gift we're unwrapping this week is the gift of peace. And we've looked at uh, the promise of peace and we looked at um, uh, that promise that uh, that one would come who would bring peace. We looked at Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. And then we, uh, we looked at the provision of peace uh, where God has provided already for the peace of humanity, the shalom that is needed. We looked at the price of peace yesterday, the cross of Christ, and then today we're looking at the person of peace. And the person of peace is none other than Jesus himself. He is that peace. Um, he is that which brings peace, and he himself is that peace. He supplies that which is missing in humanity. He removes that barrier. It is uh, the, the very person uh, is the bringer of peace himself. And I want us to look at two verses of Scripture, or actually four, but two that we're basically tying this to. And one is John 14, and the other is John 16. And in this section, in John 14 and John 16, you, between that you have what is called the um, upper room discourse. And this is the final te teachings of Jesus to his disciples before his crucifixion. Uh, and the last is in chapter 16, the final words of Jesus, my peace I leave with you. Um, and he goes out into the Garden of Gethsemane there uh, and is betrayed and handed over to, um, to the Jewish leaders, the you know, partial Sanhedrin trial, uh, and then you know the story. Um, but this is Christmas time, so why are we talking about that? Well, because our peace is tied not just to the birth of Christ, but to the cross of Christ as well. And it is all in the person. Our peace comes in the person of Jesus Christ, in his coming uh, in the manger, his coming uh, to, to save us, and his death on the cross, his coming to, to die upon that cross. In John 14, 27, we have, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your be, heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So the shalom uh, is what Jesus leaves us with. You remember what shalom is, uh, and of course that's the understanding of, behind the Greek word irene, uh, the, the Hebrew word shalom, and that is what is meant here. But when you translate that into Greek, it, it goes from shalom to arene. And so that peace means nothing missing, nothing absent, completeness and wholeness. And a, a lack of conflict, yes, but that lack of conflict is tied to the fact that there's nothing missing, there's nothing to be in conflict about. So this shalom is what Jesus is leaving his disciples, his followers have this peace. He gives it. There's no other way you can get it other than that Jesus gives it. You know, we can talk about Jesus being the Prince of Peace, and that is true. That is wonderful. But if you don't receive the peace that he brings, then you don't have it. He gives peace, but you must receive that peace, that wholeness and completeness. You must receive that. And he doesn't give it to us as the world gives, he says. And indeed, the world can't give it. Uh, the world cannot give us this completeness or wholeness. The world parades around and talks about peace um, and, and talks a good game, but it's always at the point of a gun. It's always at the point of a sword. It's always with a uh, noose around our necks that that peace comes because the world cannot give peace any other way. In fact, the, the peace of Rome, the Pax Romana, uh, that was ongoing during the first century, uh, this much vaunted and talked about peace of Rome, well, that Caesar brought. Well, the, yes, there was a peace, so to speak, but it was a peace that was uh, brought about by a very big sword. And there were those in, 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 in Israel who felt like the only way that Messiah could truly deliver his people was with a much bigger sword than what the Romans had. And Jesus brought peace in a much different way. He brought peace in reality. Not peace with tyranny, but peace, um, not some despotic rule, but peace, uh, wholeness and completeness that the world cannot give. The world can't give that. Uh, and Jesus is the only one who can give it. And so he doesn't give it as the world gives because the world can't give it. And he says this, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So we're not to be shaken. That's what that word literally means, to shake up. 
we're not to let our hearts be shaken, our inner being shaken up by the things of the world. We're not to be fearful by what we see. We're not to become afraid. Why? Because our peace, our wholeness, our completeness is not based in the world, but it is a gift from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, who not only is our Savior, not only the one who dies for us so that we can be reconciled to the Father, but through him we have that wholeness and completeness uh, and there's nothing missing, there's nothing lacking. So we're not in conflict. There's not conflict within, there's not conflict with others. So because I, there's nothing that is taken from me, there's nothing missing from me, so I have that wholeness and that peace. And then we come to the end. That's the beginning of the, uh, of the Upper Room Discourse. In the close of the Upper Room Discourse, you have this uh, John 16, 33, and these are the last words of Jesus primarily. These things I have spoken to you, all of that teaching that comes between chapter 14 and, and 16, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. So we see clearly that, that Jesus is not primarily talking about conflict because he says that you're going to be in the world, um, there's going to be conflict. And that word, word that is used there for conflict or tribulation or trouble is thlipsis. And it means, uh, literally it means to be pressed together or under pressure. Uh, and... Uh, it, in this context, it, it means um, conflict, it means uh, oppression, uh, suffering due to oppression, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to have that in the world. It's so obviously the peace that he gives does not do away with that which is anti-Christ, that which is against Christ and his kingdom. Uh, and the world is seen as this evil, this evil um, system that is against that. Uh, and and it, it is uh, the kingdom of darkness. All of that is the, the, of the flesh. All of those things are related. And he says that you're going to have trouble. We live in two worlds. We live in in we we live in this world, though we're not of it. And we also um, uh, he, he says uh, we live in Christ. So we're in Christ as well. So in the world, we're going to experience conflict. Uh, there are going to be those forces that are against us. That's true. Um, but he says, in him, we have peace in Jesus. We have wholeness. We have completeness. We have the shalom of God that he gives to us. As he says in verse 14, that I give, I give to you. And the reason that we have this conflict, the reason that we have this, that is against us is because the world does not have that peace. In fact, in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. Those who reject the one who brings peace are at war uh, with him, and they have no peace. They have they have this constant lack, this constant emptiness, this constant hole that they're trying to fill. And there is this hatred for those who have it filled and have this wholeness and completeness and this tranquility and this security that comes from Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, who gives this, and we possess him, and we are in him, and therefore we have our peace, and it is found in him. He says, in the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Uh, in, in the world we do have conflict and trouble, um, but he says for us to be courageous, don't be fearful and don't be shaken up, because he has overcome that evil, he's overcome that wickedness and that darkness, he's overcome all of that. Uh, because he is the Prince of Peace. He's the one who brings peace, and he is the Christ. He is the Savior. He is the King of Kings. He is God himself. And so he alone, he comes and he alone can give us that peace. He alone can reconcile us to God through his blood. He is the, the, the one who is promised. Uh, he's the one that, that God the Father has provided his Son, and he was pleased to do so. And we end with Philippians 4, 6, and 7, one of my favorite passages. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding or comprehension, shall garrison or set guard around your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Christ Jesus, the peace of God will surround your heart and your mind to keep you from being anxious, to keep you from being fearful, to, uh, to keep you from worry and anxiety. All of that, it comes from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And so all of that ties together. God has promised it. God has provided our peace. And uh, the price for our peace has been paid by Jesus Christ. And he himself is our peace, that in him we have wholeness, completeness, fullness, nothing missing, nothing lacking. 
and, uh, and we find that that peace guards our hearts and our minds in Christ so that we are not anxious and fearful, but courageous. Well, I pray that you know the love of God in Christ Jesus. I pray that you know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, because God loves you so much. He gave his son, Jesus, you might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy indescribable right here and right now, and to have that peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray that that's yours, my friend. I pray that the peace of God rests upon you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, and your home this holiday season, and especially Christmas, and always. Until we meet again, shalom, my friend.